thank you for that uh, question, Saleya. Of course, we've seen much about Bill 21, and I think uh, you know most, uh, if not all, viewers are probably well aware of Quebec's Bill 21 and what it's doing in Canada. So I will um, I will explain a little bit about uh, India's Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA for those who may not be familiar with it. Um, in December 2019, Narendra Modi's government, uh, which uh, has displayed extreme hostility towards Indo-Muslims uh, since first being elected, passed the CAA. The uh, uh, legislation is intended to provide Indian citizenship to Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi, and Christian migrants or refugees from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan, three Muslim-majority countries, who entered India before December of 2014. However, Muslims are included under this law and face risks of statelessness, disenfranchisement, detention, and deportation. Um, this religion test violates the secular nature of the Indian con uh, constitution and eliminates equality between Indian citizens and violates, frankly, the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights to which India is a state party. In addition, the law targets those arbitrarily de de declared as foreigners via a democratic, uh, discriminatory uh, bureaucratic process. In particular, it directly impacts 1.9 million persons of Bengali origin, the vast majority of whom are Muslim, who are excluded from the National Register of Citizens in the state of Assam. Um, many of them have roots in India going back generations, but they may not have the official documents to prove their claims to citizenship and therefore um, are put at risk under this uh, law. Um, critics say that uh, the CAA bill is part of uh, Modi's agenda to marginalize Muslims and to undo the secular nature of the Indian government. Um, this law has been condemned by the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner as being discriminatory, as well as by obviously Muslim groups and human rights groups uh, in uh, India. Um, it's interesting to note that uh, the NDP Green and Bloc, while they made uh, ma major statements on the CA condemning this law as discriminatory, uh, the Trudeau government has remained completely silent on the issue, despite uh, public demonstrations that have taken place um, in various Canadian communities calling on the government to condemn the law. Um, of course, the main reason for this is that there are 1.5 million Indo-Canadians uh, in this country, um, the vast majority being Hindu and many who are supportive of the Modi government. And of course, a lot, uh, I, I, the vast majority of these Indo-Canadians uh, who are able to vote uh, support the Liberals. Uh, the Conservatives have remained silent on the CAA because they hope that uh, they can increase their support within that community. Now, um, Quebec's Bill 21 secularism law was passed in June, 19, uh, June 2019. And it was the culmination of more than a decade of efforts by, frankly, the white Francophone uh, Quebecois community to limit the religious rights of Quebec Muslims. Um, the first salvo in this battle in Quebec was fired during the regional accommodation debates in the late 2000s under uh, then Premier, Liberal Premier Jean Charest. The next attempt to address the issue of reasonable accommodation and focusing specifically on the Muslim community was the attempt by the Parti Québécois government uh, with their Charter of Values. Then when they got defeated and we had another Liberal government elected, um, that government uh, put in place, I believe the bill was uh, Bill 62, uh, and it was uh, called the Niqab ban legislation by the Liberal government, and it was challenged constitutionally. Now, all the efforts of uh, up to that point, um, if they had gone through the courts and reached the Supreme Court, would have been deemed unconstitutional because the efforts specifically targeted Quebec Muslims. However, when the CAQ got elected under Francois Legault, um, they took another approach. They decided to target all religious minority communities in Quebec, and they justified it um, under Bill 21 with the claim that it was to protect Quebec secular society. And frankly, they didn't really care about the collateral damage to um, minority religious communities other than Muslims. Now, the issue of secularism, I think we all generally understand it, but at its, at its uh, core, secularism says that governments shall not designate a state religion or favor one religion over another. 
So unlike, for example, the government of Saudi Arabia or Iran, which are openly declared as um, Islamic uh, governments, we do not have you know, any governments in Canada, either provincially or federal at the federal level, that say that they are a Christian government. That is essentially what secularism is about. But what Quebec has done is they have wrapped secularism uh, in the language of, um, I would say, radical atheism. Um, the intent of the Bill 21 law is to target Muslims, and, and I don't think that uh, there would be a lot of disagreement uh, with that statement. But the collateral damage, of course, affects Jews, Sikhs, and other minority faith communities. And um, prior to the passage of the law in, uh, in June of 2019, there was a poll done in Quebec, and there's an article about it from that time in the Montreal Gazette, which says that public support among the largely Francophone population of Quebec was driven by their animosity towards Muslims. Uh, so I think when you have um, uh, people like Yves-Francois Blanchet and Francois Legault saying that Quebec, Quebecers are not racist, no, not all Quebecers are racist, but certainly a significant portion of Quebecers and particularly Francophone Quebecers are racist when it comes to, um, uh, to Quebec Muslims. And uh, if Mr. Uh, Blanchette, he made this uh, big show after the English language debate, when he was asked a question about, um, about Bill 21, he made a big show in the post-debate scrum saying that the moderator had called him a xenophobe and a racist. Now she used no such words in the question that she put to Mr. Legault. However, if he was sitting in front of me, I would say to him, Mr. Legault, if you don't want to be labeled as a xenophobe and a racist, then don't support xenophobic and racist legislation. And, and that's basically it. Both the Indian law and Quebec's law are, in my view, deeply rooted, rooted in Islamophobia and anti-Muslim bigotry. Obviously, anti-Muslim sentiment has been around in India for decades, but it is a relatively new phenomenon in Quebec. However, the end result of both is the same legalized discrimination against Muslims. And of course, in Quebec, um, that includes uh, observant Muslims, observant Jews, observant Sikhs. Now, while some Canadian party leaders have been willing to speak out on the CAA in India, they have all chosen to do nothing or say nothing about Bill 21 because of uh, the fear of losing voter support among Francophone Quebecers. Um, uh, Aaron O'Toole has basically said, uh, he will respect Quebec's right to do what it uh, does in its own house. Um, sadly, Jagmeet Singh, uh, as the only other major party leader who is racialized, um, has also said the same. And Justin Trudeau, when he was campaigning the 2019 election, said he would be willing to consider government action. But of course, after the election in 2019, we heard nothing more. And essentially, I think that all three major party leaders are guilty of throwing uh, human rights under the bus in, uh, in Quebec. Both the Indian law and the Quebec law deny rights and the primary targets of the rights being denied are Muslims. Both laws are unconstitutional in their respective jurisdiction. In Canada, Muslim Quebecers, mainly women who wear the hijab, have had their lives disrupted and can't pursue careers uh, uh, in professions like teachers, crown attorneys, police and other jobs that are publicly funded because of Quebec's uh, law. Whether things change, of course, depends on the challenges making their way through the Quebec courts, um, which can take years. However, the uh, residents of Quebec who are affected by the law do have an option of moving to another part of Canada to pursue their public sector careers. Now, obviously that's not ideal, but um, unlike the situation where Indian Muslims, they have an option. Indian Muslims, of course, don't have similar options due to the decades of hostility towards Muslims, which has also infected India's justice system and got a steroid boost when Narendra Modi formed the government in that country. The state sanctioned bigotry and racism targeting Muslims in Quebec, India, and frankly, in nations like France, China, Israel, and other nations, is a direct result of anti-Muslim hostility and an explosion in Islamophobia around the world following 9-11 uh, attacks 20 years ago. Since that uh, day uh, in 2001, Muslims have been vilified, dehumanized, and denigrated in various countries. 
Um, it's been you, uh, the same thing has happened in news media and of course in entertainment media to the point that in some jurisdictions, politicians use the vilification of Muslims as a path to electoral success. And frankly, that's what's happening in Quebec, both uh, provincially with Francois Legault and federally under the Bloc Québécois. We're seeing this happen. Um, and uh, when Francois Legault talked about um, uh, the issue of Quebec's Bill 21 in the uh, debate last week, he said it, you know, it was the right of Quebec to do what it was doing. It was an expression of Quebec culture. Um, frankly, if your culture advocates racism or bigotry against any minority, then I think you need to really rethink how you express your, your cultural intentions. Ultimately, whether it's in India, Quebec, or China, or in France, the root problem um, is a pandemic of Islamophobia that is exploding around the world where Muslims are in the minority. And if the Canadian government wants to live up to its claims that it's made so often of being a defender of human rights and the rule of law, then all party leaders um, should not be picking and choosing whose rights they choose to defend based on political or economic expediency. All party leaders need to step up and defend the human rights of religious minorities, not just in Quebec, but also overseas if it wants to stand up as a human rights champion and speak out and act against foreign governments that implement policies rooted in hate, bigotry, and racism that result in the persecution of minorities, both within Canada and outside. Thank you.